Mark Zuckerberg blamed the FBI for their censoring of the Hunter Biden laptop story. And then he blamed his computer circuits for his inability to love. Trump demanded a do-over election, but Biden has invoked the Seventh Amendment, which expressly forbids takebacks. Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act, successfully converting inflation into green energy. Support student loan forgiveness? If you don't, then you ain't Christian. Amazon's The Rings of Power begins Friday. Maybe now we'll finally learn which of the great eagles is gay. All of this and more on The Bee Weekly. Hey, do you deal with stress and anxiety throughout your day? I know I do. Do you find yourself on your phone constantly? I know I do. So stop checking social media and pop open the Abide app to ease your mind. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app. Abide users report less stress, lower levels of anxiety and depression, and better sleep. Start your day with Abide's daily meditation. Based on biblical scripture, these audio meditations will center you and draw you closer to Christ. For a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you text BABYLON to 22433. That's BABYLON to 22433. Abide's meditations start at two minutes long. They're easy to fit in your schedule. And at the end of the day, find deep rest with Abide's bedtime stories. Get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by texting BABYLON to 22433. You'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. And you're supporting our show. And you get 25% off. Win, win, win. Text Babylon to 22433. Introduction to the podcast. It's welcome, that time. Welcome, Brian Laubach. Hey, I'm happy I'm to be back. I'm phoning it in today. I'm really tired. So. You're quiet quiting. Have you I'm quiet, that? quiet quitting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was just or, called regular working. Or what was the other thing? Was it fudgel? Was that the thing? Oh, yeah. What was that? Yeah, something like that. What was there fudgel? was a word. That was like where you oh, phoned same. it in at Phoned work. it in. Yeah. Fudgling. Well, well, today we're fudgling. I'm loud quitting. You're loud. Mm. Oh, loud. Oh, loud. Yeah, there you go. Put, that's in my blood. But it's funny. I read the description of quiet quitting, and I'm like kind of of two minds about it. Because mm-hmm. it's like on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, put in full effort. And on yeah. the other hand, I'm like, this is just like normal American work ethic. Like this. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's different people's interpretation of what it means to yeah. quiet quit. Because some people, it seems like they're saying, don't let your work life interfere with yeah, right. your personal life and other things. And then some people, it's like, yeah, just go in and put in the like minimal amount of effort. <laughs> that. You know, I disagree with that. Are you a quiet quitter or do you work really hard on your comic? Brian Law draws comic books, by the way. Yay, comics. Um, I'm definitely not a quiet quitter, being that uh, I don't get enough work in my day job that I decided to just work after that over. And, you know, just it's a lot of work doing the books and I'm not getting money for that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what that Well, happens. we're going to change that Yay! today on the Babylon Bee by getting you to pay for his... It's good quality stuff. So. Art. High quality stuff. Yeah. I've got the Space People book. But I'm a believer in work. You want to do... You want to like... You want to... Like you can be an entrepreneur in a business if you work for a business because you can come up... I, that's what I do. I come up with stuff for my day job where I'm in charge of stuff and I create stuff to make the work better and code stuff and, and automate stuff to make our workflow and more accurate and quicker. So I would quite quit if I had to do that. <laughs> if I had to code stuff, I would be like... Exactly. Yeah, so then I'm once out. I code it, I can just do it and let it run. I was c- kind of responsible for getting iPhones at, our last, at my last company because the truck drivers would have to like call in what they were picking up and you'd have to read them the entire... I was a warehouse manager. You'd have to read them the whole list of what they were getting and they'd write it down. They'd always get it wrong. And so I sent a letter to the CEO of the company and I was like, these new iPhone things are pretty cool and they can actually <laughs> read the PDF oh. on their phone and they bought iPhones for everybody. So nice. I take credit for that. That hey. was me. Innovative. I invented the iPhone. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, we have a subscriber dare today. This is from Clayton. This is subscriber dare. And he says, read this world record and I'll forgive you for not mentioning Age of Empires 2 in your best video games list. You know, I never got um, too much in Age of Empires just because I wasn't good at them. I'm not good at those strategy games where you have to think. Let me shoot something, and I'm I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> he then sent us a link to a video. So I don't know how I'm supposed to read a video, but I guess we can look at it real quick, and I'll read it. I'll try to read it. Uh, most walnuts cracked with the head <laughs> in one minute. Guinness World Records rivals. Oh man. And we have a guy named S. Navin Kumar from India 
who is, yep, he's cracking walnuts with his head. That's not fair. They they have them all laid out for him in a row. Like that's not in nature. That looks kind of fun to try that. I don't know if I could crack one walnut. I don't know. That's, that's a, I've never tried to do it with my head. I wonder if it hurts. You missed and if one it's there. Skill or if you can kind of do it quickly. I'm sure it does after doing that many. But you got to get a callus. Now the record is not without missing because he is missing some. No, it must be just get as many. But you know, but I feel yeah, like I you could rather just lay out a if bunch and get just go, in a bam, tree. Bam. Do they grow on trees? Like walnuts should... don't grow on trees. <laughs> yeah, they. I think they. Well, I don't know. Some kind of. I don't know. This is tree, like but... if you want to get CTE but don't want to make millions in the NFL. <laughs> It's the quick way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, when you're quiet quitting in the NFL, you can just yeah. do this instead. I want a concussion this from doing still something going. stupid. Wow. Do we have to watch the whole thing? Yes. No. The last one's the most is exciting. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, wait I don't stop. know if we do. There's there's like... A next challenger. <laughs> there's multiple. Oh, the, there's multiple oh challenges. this is a thing. Like there was like... Mohammed Rashid from Pakistan. five minutes left in this video. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's been favored. Oh, my gosh. He just passed out. Favored for this... <laughs> All right. Well, oh, um, you just you just gave yourself a concussion, but you won this certificate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad that I, <laughs> that I watched it. He doesn't even know where he is. He's like, why? I have, why does he feel like I have there? Does he want you to do that? He wa- he, he said if or I just to, he said read this. So the challenge was to read so about. He, he hates world, world records. records. Okay. So. I well, guess you did the dare then. I liked that one. So. Give us money, Clayton. Yay. Dare is just to learn about a world record, not to try it. <laughs> I feel like I haven't accomplished anything now, seeing that guy do that. Contract or no, I will not bow to any sponsor. You should get some Babylon B merch. Look at all this Babylon B merch. We're all decked out in the B merch. It's like people only do things because they get paid, and that's just really sad. Look, we have a conservative tears of joy tumbler. It says conservative tears, which makes people look at you and go, wait, are you some liberal? And then you say, of joy, and they go... They go, huh, why? What? And then he goes, the abortion of Roe v. Wade. Three jokes in one, and it keeps your drink warm. Brilliant. So that's you get to have cool. a long conversation as you drink your coffee. Brilliant. Now, this shirt is only a double-take shirt, but it's Clarence Thomas, and it says hope. Mm-hmm. So awesome. people look at you and go, oh, yeah, I love that Ob... Wait a second. <laughs> that's the black guy we don't like. And then they clutch that's their pearls. A, yeah, and then they... He, Uncle and they Tom. try to cancel you. Check it out, shop.babylonbee.com. We also have our new Babylon Bee Guide to Democracy. By the time this comes out, it will be coming out in like three days. So please go pre-order, pre-order it on Amazon or any website that does not hate you. What's in the news this week? Uh, Trump has demanded the reinstatement, his reinstatement as rightful president or a new election immediately. Uh, it says, as some Republic, Republicans seek distance from him. Uh, this is that, I want to say tweet, but it's his truth social <laughs> thing. That, what do you call things on there? <laughs> Truths. He truthed, he you, truthed out this. You know what they say? They say, like, post your truth when you're on there. Oh, really? And then when you reshare something, it's like retruthing. Oh, it just oh really? I don't love that because I feel like That's the terrible. whole speak your truth thing <laughs> know, is right? like a That's what's so bad about it. Oh, my mindset, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is after the, all this evidence came out that the FBI buried the Hunter Biden laptop story. And he said, so now it comes out conclusively that the FBI buried the Hunter Biden laptop story before the election, knowing that if they didn't, Trump would have easily won the 2020 presidential election. This is massive fraud and election interference at a level never seen before in our country. Remedy. Declare the rightful winner or, and this would be the minimal solution, declare the 2020 election irreparably compromised and have a new election immediately. That's going to happen. I think the chances are I like that he, that he tries. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he's like, new election. It's worth putting this out there. Yeah. Well, that's your truth, mm-hmm. Trump. So Biden's woke agenda has passed under the name Inflation Reduction Act. And it has nothing to do with inflation. No, uh, Lizzo's still the same size. Do we have the Lizzo story on here? Because I want to talk about that. Well, mm. we can we can get to it after this one. <laughs> do you have a weekly news item about? Uh, I don't. No, no. sad. Uh, and that would that would be a low hanging fruit. For oh me. man, that yeah, headline you just did with hangs lower every week. Her having to be oppressed to walk up and get the uh, medal. Yeah, she was oppressed. That yeah. was yeah, that was a great article. <laughs> that was a punch. So this thing covers uh, this. The Inflation Reduction Act, of course, covers health care, clean energy, taxes, <laughs> 87,000 IRS agents, Medicare prescription drug costs are lowered, families with electric vehicles get an additional tax credit, rebates for families to buy energy-efficient home appliances, more taxes on corporate profits, 
And um, yeah. 126 leading economists say that this will help reduce inflation and support strong, stable economic growth. And the government will make $124 billion more in the next 10 years from this. Yay, more money for the government. <laughs> I like that our note writers are just writing our thoughts for yeah. us now. What if I like this joke? What if I like this act? Do you guys assume that I'm not going to like this act? Well, did they, is the, uh, isn't this the thing that part of it was the um, IRS agents yeah, being added? Yeah. And mm -hmm. did that stay in? Are yeah. still doing that yeah. part? Yeah. So that's good. Well, but Biden now has a plan to cancel student debt. This should help inflation as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so $10,000 for people who didn't get a Pell Grant and then 20000 if you did get a Pell Grant, I think. Mm -hmm. And nothing if you paid off your own debts like you should have. <laughs> <laughs> that is the weirdest thing. And I know... It's so bizarre. You know, you can make the argument that obviously these, these loans are predatory yes. and, and they're bad and the government shouldn't have subsidized yeah. them Yes, in and the if first there was place. legislation to change the way these right. loans are, you know, the way they collect interest on them and the way they, you know, target people <laughs> that aren't going to be able to pay them back. But yeah, it doesn't make it's sense bizarre. to just forgive the loans for people who haven't paid them and then everyone who did pay them is just... And it's just blanket, tough, right? Tough it's like you could have went to, you know, school to learn, you know, underwater basket weaving and yeah. you're going to get a, a forgiveness or a loan? I mean... Is it, it's just blanket. They didn't put any kind of credentials in there. Yeah, when you picture two people, one guy who decided I'm going to do the responsible thing and pay off my loan mm -hmm. and not splurge on, you know, a new car or Yeah, we don't want whatever. to encourage people like that. Yeah, and then the guy who said, no, I'm going to go do, I'm going to go do Europe. I'm going to yeah. go out and do a crazy thing, $10,000 and not pay off my loan. He gets rewarded. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a real sense of unfairness there and the fact that they're not fixing the broken system, but. I don't know. It's did you guys bad. get student loans? Are you, were you? Uh, I didn't know because uh, my uh, I went to Penn State and my mom worked at one of the branch campuses, so I got uh, I went to for a discounted rate, and both my brothers went there. We were kind of able to pay it off as we went between myself and my parents helping. Yeah, yeah, I I, I got like eight thousand dollars in student mm -hmm. loans, and I you know we slowly chipped that way out of me and my wife. We paid it off, paid them off. Yeah, and then she did. She had eight thousand dollars in student loans for her um, hair school or cosmetology school. Oh. And she uh, also, we also slowly chipped away and paid that off. Yeah. So we paid 16,000 loans that presumably we, we would have been able to get yeah. free. <laughs> I, I did it right and I just robbed a couple of banks, you know. You're right, that's a good. Nice. No, I, I actually Pay off borrowed. your student loans with this one weird trick. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I, I uh, got, I actually borrowed money from my employer who was a friend of mine and slowly paid him off and I got some, you know, financial aid and whatnot. So, mm. yeah. but that's kind of a loan, I guess. Well, Rings of Power comes out today if it's Friday. And uh, yeah, we're going to see what happens. Amazon says they've invested almost a hundred, uh, like $1 billion. <laughs> $1 billion to produce the series. To produce the series. And it yes. looks terrible. I'm sorry. I know if this comes out and it has rave reviews and the audience loves it, then I apologize. But it looks mm. terrible from everything that I've seen. And I'm a big Tolkien purist. So yeah. when I see this, like that it's not from Tolkien and these characters are made up and you have one of the characters is a single mother who is just trying to do the right thing and protect her. Mm, my lord. Child. Really? Yeah, they, they, they put this very prominently in the promo oh, material. Man. You know. Have they identified others in the promo that are like woke characters yet? Or? It, so I wouldn't say that the main problem seems to be wokeness. Uh -huh. It does seem to be taking like modernist types of characters yeah. and putting them in there. So it's not, I don't think they're going to have like LGBTQ stuff. Yeah. You know, but they did focus heavily on like the forbidden romance between the single mother and the black elf. Uh -huh. Like that's a thing which wouldn't have been a thing in Tolkien. So. Oh, I see. You, you think it could be a gateway for people who are not into the, you know, the traditional Tolkien mentality, well, yeah, and maybe I, they can introduce them to it. I mean, to some degree, I'm sure no. that will happen, but no, more, it probably do more damage. <laughs> it do more damage. No, but, damage well, I think the, but I think the values of what these people care about is so much different from what Tolkien cares. Yes. Like he was this devout Catholic, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know that it, that it will really do that. And I hate that the whole generation is going to see Tolkien through this lens instead of, yeah. like even Peter Jackson had issues, but it was at least somewhat faithful to what the book was trying to do. We have an exclusive scene from Rings of Power on our YouTube channel. You should go check that out. Travis's Game Corner. You know, I played the, uh, there was a, what, Aragorn's Quest, Lord of the Rings once, and it was, it was okay. It was like a very light uh, the Legend of Zelda um, mixed with World of Warcraft, because you get quests to be like, ah, kill five spiders. And I'm like, I don't remember Aragorn killing five spiders in his entire life. Um, and it was on the Wii, and then eventually the PlayStation. But guess what? No one bought it. Boom. Um, and that's my experience with The Lord of the Rings, Aragorn's Quest. 
And then there were a few uh, Lord of the Rings games that were basically just brawlers, they were beat em ups, and they had really good graphics, so everyone loved them, but you know what? They were kind of boring. And every time I play a brawler, I just want, like, multiplayer, come on. But the two towers was single player. And you know what? Boring. Very boring game. So you're running around, you get to choose Aragorn, or Gimli, or Legolas, but you're just kind of running around hacking dudes off in Helm's Deep. Eh, it's okay. But it lacked the gravitas that the sequel, Return of the King, had, because that was two players, and you could play as Gandalf at the Pelennol Fields. Uh, so that was cool, but I don't know. All those games weren't that great. I prefer Lord of the Rings Online. Um, I was part of a kinship called the Song of the Anur, and it was just me and one other guy. Um, and now he is a they. So that's my story of the Lord of the Rings Online. I got through Moria, that was cool. And I got through, um, see, I ended up in Isengard. That's the last place I was. There's no wheelchairs in that game. Here I come. Get off the wheel. Oh no. Wheelchair. Uh, neurodivergent. Treasure in heaven is great, but it's not gonna buy you a tank of gas. So let's take a moment to briefly review the current state of our economy and the global effect the war between Russia and Ukraine has had. We're in for a tough year here, and Biden's printing and spending could be catastrophic for the US dollar and the market. That's why a growing number of financial analysts are recommending you diversify with gold and silver now. And the only company we recommend is Allegiance Gold. Our friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver and have it delivered securely right to your door. The team at Allegiance Gold takes the time to educate their clients on the importance of having a financial portfolio that's diversified with gold and silver. Allegiance Gold has been one of the top precious metals firms in the nation for their commitment to protecting your hard-earned savings. They have an a from the Better Business Bureau, a five-star rating with Trustlink, and they're AAA rated with the Business Consumer Alliance. If you act now by calling them and you mention Babylon B, We'll even give you $500 of free silver on a qualified purchase. Call 844-790-9191 to get this exclusive offer. Or you can visit allegiancegold.com slash B. That's B-E-E. -E. Call 844-790-9191. That's 844-790-9191. Or visit allegiancegold.com slash B-E-E. -E. Well, we have now covered. We have now covered the news, <laughs> but instead of news, we're going to now do something that everybody else likes: poplitics. What poplitics? If it's if you like pop culture, like today's TV shows, and want to hear us talk more about it, we won't. But we did talk to someone who loves pop culture po slash politics. I, this is the first time I'm reading this. <laughs> and how we can use pop culture to start conversation about politics with the younger generation. Let's go to Alex Clark. And now for another interview on The Bee Weekly. Welcome to the Babylon Bee Interview Show. We are sitting down with Alex Clark. I'm very excited to have her on the show today. Um, Alex, what's going on with the Kardashians? What's the deal with the Kardashians? <laughs> what's the deal? Listen, there's always something. Uh, actually, Courtney and Travis Barker, Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker just got married, right? And mm. now, if you guys are familiar with the TikTok family, the D'Amelio sisters, Charlie oh, D'Amelio, yeah. who is now dating Travis Barker's son. So that is pretty huge because you've got now the D'Amelio family and the Kardashians intertwined. So for most of your audience to play like what? But for like the young Gen Zers, they're going to be like, okay, that's actually big news. Mm, mm, agreed. So you are the cute conservative, the person leading the conservative movement uh, in pop culture. So tell us how that started. And are conservatives just bad at interacting with pop culture? And how do you want to change that? Yeah, they're super bad at it. And that's what, like, I've always been conservative. I'm kind of, I'm kind of proud of that, though. <laughs> like, I'm kind of happy that I don't know what you're talking about right now. I'm, that, that is a badge of honor. But there's two different sides. So, like, half of conservatives would have your 
point of view. And then half would say we're not doing the most. We're not doing enough to kind of tackle that sphere of culture. And what was happening with me was I grew up conservative. I grew up in a conservative home. I've always been conservative and outspoken about it. Um, But I was working for almost 10 years in pop radio. So I was in like the morning radio circuit in a few different markets. And I was covering entertainment news every day. And, you know, who's dating who and what's going on with Justin Bieber, whatever. Um, But there would inevitably be things in pop culture news that would lean politically. So, for example, one of those huge things would be like when Jesse Smollett happened. Okay, Mm -hmm. when Juicy Sommelier was going down, I knew immediately this kid is a liar. But I was on air and I knew that I couldn't go off on this whole thing about how like this whole like this is MAGA country and Chicago like that would never happen like this is just obviously BS but I couldn't say that because I would have gotten chastised behind the scenes by my management because you know we don't get political or whatever but it was like there's so many pop culture stories or when Miley Cyrus was licking the abortionist healthcare cake like those are all instances where it's like okay this would be a really good time for somebody that is still a fan, you know, uh, so to speak of these celebrities, but calling them out from a conservative perspective. We just didn't really have that. I was seeing this void and I just thought, man, if I could do what I do on air, but do it from a conservative perspective and mesh those two worlds together of politics and pop culture, that would be my dream show. And so I started thinking about that for about a year um, and just like in my mind, okay, how would that work? Would I, you know, move over to conservative talk radio and would I have this pop culture show and conservative talk, because since I was 18 years old, I had been doing radio. I didn't know anything else. So to me, I was trying to rationalize how would I fit this political pop culture show on terrestrial FM radio? And then out of the blue, Turning Point USA DM me on Instagram and said, hey, we're huge fans. Would you ever think about working with us? And I said, actually, yes. Fly me out. I have this idea for the show. I pitched it. And that was three years ago this fall. And uh, that's how Poplitics was born. Wow. You're a trailblazer. I just love (laughs) it. That's so cool. I mean, it is so needed. And I'm noticing that on the right, we're kind of having to build a lot of our own infrastructure in media and journalism and entertainment. So um, it's really cool to see that you're you're trailblazing. And there are so many fans of Poplitics, so many people that are showing you. We do want to hear about pop culture, but we are conservative. We have conservative values. So... Congratulations on uh, your anniversary coming up. Thank you. I, yeah, I cannot believe it. I mean, at, at first, I just I knew I wanted to create the show. And then I was thinking, well, you know, if this is going to be I don't want to just be somebody like on social media posting videos. Uh, to me, that's not enough to further mm-hmm. the conservative movement. And so I was like, well, this has to be more than just a show. It has to be some sort of community. It has to inspire people to be active and meet up and encourage each other. And now there's, I think, over 160 Facebook subgroups that are dedicated to fans of my show. So these are, you know, cute conservatives of Montana and they have meetups, conservatives of Colorado. It's so fun. Um, And none of that was, that all was totally a God thing. I mean, I I couldn't have imagined that kind of stuff happening, but it has created a really cool community for females, especially young females in the conservative movement. So tell us more about the show. What is pop culture without the propaganda? When I'm covering, for example, Pink, the singer, saying, Mm. if you're pro-life, you're not allowed to listen to my music anymore. (laughs) Any other outlet, if you read, if you look up right now on on, Google. Yes, I accept these terms. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I accept these terms. But if you look up, like, how did People Magazine cover that story? How did E! News cover Mm. that story? Every single one of them, TMZ, it's just like, oh, this is what she said. There's absolutely no pushback. There's no, like, that's insane or like how privileged of you to think like, oh, me saying you're not allowed to listen to my music anymore. Like people Mm -hmm. are going to, oh, all of a sudden I'm pro-choice. Like that's insane. But no one else covers stories like that. And so that's kind of what I do. So it's like I'm covering all the entertainment news. If you're a fan of celebrities and pop culture, but you are conservative, then it's just it's just pop culture news without leftist propaganda. I mean, it's really that simple. It's 10 minutes or less every day, the episode. Mm-hmm. It's very short. And then um, I just launched, which is where I am now, I just launched a hour-long weekly episode uh, podcast called The Spillover. And that's where I have more serious conversations. And these are interviews with people with jaw-dropping stories, whether they're celebrities or people you've never heard of, like people that have escaped serial killers and stuff. 
Well, you brought up Roe. Besides Pink, what is the craziest celebrity reaction to Roe v. Wade being overturned that you have seen? And uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm a huge Swifty. I've gone to every single tour um, besides really, her first she, one. She really peaked during Red, and I felt like it was a decline after that. But Folklore the was a bit of a reputation era was oh. my was my favorite, and after that, mm -mm, I mm -mm, mm -mm. disagree hard. The disagree. best pop album was Reputation in 1989. Max yeah. Martin, I'm a fan, and then I I literally did not listen at all during the pandemic. I was like, I can't, I can't support it anymore. So. I do want to ask you how you separate the two in your mind. Like, how do you separate your fanhood, even though these people are completely different from you in a value system? Like, how do you... How 1989 do you was a bit of a grower. <laughs> 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 so Taylor Swift, for example, I don't remember the exact quote, but she tweeted, you know, this this week or Friday when Roe was overturned. She said, you know, we're going back. Essentially, we're I'm paraphrasing, going back into the dark ages. Like, this mm. is such a backward step for women. And I just thought about that for a minute. And I was like, you know, it's so funny. You know, she's saying this kind of stuff. Other celebrities are saying this. Billy Eichner, I think, which is like, whatever. Um, they were all saying sentiments like that. And I thought about it and I said, it's interesting <sighs> because the pro-choice side says that Roe being, uh, Roe being overturned and women not being able to abort their unborn children is a step backwards. And to me, that is so unbelievably regressive, not progressive. They talk about like, you know, conservatives and pro-lifers want women to be back in the 1950s or, or whatever, um, slaving away. It's like this, I, this mentality that you can't be a woman and have a career or pursue your dreams and be a mother, that is regressive. There's nothing progressive about that. So if these people are garbage, like, why do you talk about them? You know, this is like a, about... <laughs> This is like about, you know, I mean, it, it's the same thing for me, right? Because it's like separating the art from the artist. I like a bunch of bands and musicians who are probably human garbage. But, you know, you have to separate that on some level. So, uh, discuss. Yeah, I mean, I would say that's what I do. I separate the art from the artist personally. There's a way to use pop culture to open up conversation, to get into political ideology in a way that's friendly, not aggressive, non-threatening, um, and I think easier to consume for low info voters, so to speak. Like people that would say, oh, I'm not political, but like they all consume pop culture. The Kardashians arguably set trends in our culture. Like being trans wasn't cool until Caitlyn Jenner did it. And the Kardashian dates like a skinny, over tattooed, you know, punk looking dude, then Courtney starts dating or marries Travis Barker. And then Megan, Megan Fox dates Machine Gun Kelly. Like this is a trend. When do you think this horrible trend will end? We still have a few more years because uh, everything in pop culture recycles. So mm. fashion wise, 90s is super, super in. Like, have you seen mm. these girls with high waisted mom oh, yeah. jeans, super baggy? Yeah. Sneakers? Can you explain that that to us? It just, it just, this is just how it always goes. And now we're so like, we made all those mistakes yes. so that our kids wouldn't have to. But see, then they make the same mistake, but they like, do it better. And then the generations after no. them will, will, you know, what's going to inevitably come back is the 2010s. It's, it's going to be atrocious. What was your experience on the reality show? Like, I have many questions about this. What, how did that come about? And did that, was that before your, your radio days? Discuss. It was in the middle of them. So in 2016, I went on a one season dating reality show. It was Mark Burnett's first ever dating show that he wanted to try. So Mark Burnett does Survivor, The Voice, Shark Tank. or not, Yeah, is The Voice? I can't remember. Yeah, But yeah, Shark Tank and Survivor. Anyway, so Mark Burnett had never done a dating show. And so he came up with this concept in 2016 to do the show that was like Tinder in real life, um, where these girls, we were all kept on the island of Anguilla which I had never been out of the country before. This is my first time. They took us to this island. And then people think I'm making this up, but it would be all of these single women. And, and they really wanted us to be like young professionals. So everybody had a real job. Like, you know, I was a radio personality. Somebody else was a attorney. Um, there, there were, they were all these real legit jobs, women that were really finding love and really wanted to find somebody to date after the show. And so they would fly in single guys, young professionals on a helicopter and they would drop down from the helicopter on this little rope and they would get on a speedboat and they would zoom up to our dock on this island and the women 
we would each get about five minutes with this guy and we would walk behind him and we would walk left if we were not interested where he couldn't see, or we would walk right if we were interested. It was just like Tinder. Swipe left, yeah, you know, for no. Swipe right for yes. And so one, the people that walked right and they were like, hey, I, I'm interested in this guy. I keep talking to him. We were all kept in a little cabana. And then that guy, when he was done talking to everybody, he would go see who had walked right. And he would choose two women to go mm-hmm. to this mansion that Beyonce and Jay-Z have vacationed at to do a two-on-one date for a couple nights and see oh, who he was vibing with. Two-on-one? Yes. Oh. The big takeaway from this, they painted my character, which which I found out later, the executive producers wanted me to be the villain because they mm. made me the Republican. Mm. <laughs> And the big thing that happened was, which is what changed my life. Um, So this was in the middle of my radio career, but before I was working in politics, this was right before a few years before working um, at Turning Point USA. There was a moment on the show where I was on that two in one date and I was talking to one of the guys, the suitors alone. And I knew that he was more liberal than I was, but we hadn't talked specifics about like different things we believe until he says, um, so because you're conservative, does that mean that you're pro-life? Does that mean that you don't believe in a woman's right to choose? And I said, correct. I'm pro-life no matter what, no exceptions. Um, and I think I was 23, if I'm doing the math right, it was, I think I was 23 while we were filming this and um, I'm 29 now. And he looked at me and he said, well, I just, I think that's unacceptable. As a woman, how could you say that a woman can't choose, you know, whether or not she wants to have a baby or not? Um, And he just said, you know, you're 23. You don't know anything yet. You don't know what you believe. That's what he said to me. And I just thought, number one, that's the most offensive thing anyone's ever said to me. It's so disrespectful to say that. And I, and I was thinking, you know, I guarantee if I would have said that I'm a leftist and that I'm pro-choice, he wouldn't have said, well, you're only 23. You don't know what you believe yet. You know, that wouldn't have been his reaction. It was only right. because I said that I was pro-life and a conservative. So then we don't know as contestants what's going to end up airing on the show. So people that go on The Bachelor and stuff, they don't know until the rest mm-hmm. of America what's going to end up making the cut on the actual series. So I'm sitting on my couch with my friends watching um, this year's come out and I'm sitting there and they air it. But even the pro-choice people said, I've never seen someone on a mainstream dating reality show on TV be so steadfast in what she believes and stand up for her beliefs like that when confronted. I've never seen this and I'm so inspired to just like really hone in on what I believe going forward when I'm dating. And then the pro-life young girls were like, I've never seen myself represented on a reality dating Mm. show ever. This is so crazy. All of it had led to the door opening, I think, for me to do these shows I have now with Turning Point USA. All right. Well, we are going to move into (laughs) our 10 questions. The 10 questions. Have you ever met Carmen? No, I've never. I've never met him. Okay. Uh, are you a Calvinist or an Arminian? Not a Calvinist, but Armin- Arminian. I don't Explain. know that term. Okay. It's a predestination or free will. Free will. Okay. You can add <laughs> one book to the Bible. What is it? Like a like a made-up one or one of the hidden ones? Well, whatever you want, but people tend to pick you know, their favorite book or something that would be good for everyone to read. Well, I mean, I love true crime, so <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Maybe it would be interesting to hear, like in the Bible times, you know, Jesus's take on uh, on more of like the mysteries that were going on, mm. or something the like true fun crime like that with Jesus. True, the, the true crime of Judas. Okay, <laughs> a true crime novel about Jesus. Cigars or pipes? Cigars. Mm. Um, you get to hang out with any three people, living or dead. Who are they? Well. Obviously, Taylor Swift, because I just, Mm. I want to be around her. I want to try to challenge her and change her mind. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Mm. Reese Witherspoon. Mm. Whiskey or beer? I hate, hate, hate both. What would be the first thing you would do as president? I would want to completely restructure the foster care system. Mm. Have you ever punched anyone slash been punched? No. Okay. Oh, now you get to go to the next <laughs> most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you. Oh gosh. 
slash have you ever peed your pants in public? Sorry, Kyle. Yes, I peed my pants in public. <gasps> Wait, was um, that the most embarrassing thing? Pro- well, probably. I've peed my... <laughs> I've peed my pants in probably every place that you could, that like I've peed my pants everywhere because I, the problem with me is that I, like, I've literally peed my pants in a cave because I Have laugh. you ever not peed your pants in public? <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so hard sometimes and I'm like crying um, laughing. There have just been instances, um, especially when I was younger, but now it's been a while. Okay. That's pretty funny. Um, uh, you get to go to one concert, any band in history, who do you go see? You said band or just solo artist? Yeah, just any. Like if I could have gone to Woodstock or something and seen Jimi Hendrix, like that's okay. like that's just one of those like epic things I think would have been cool. Final question. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. First time I was six. And anytime I ever feel a little nervous, I always do it again just for good measure. <laughs> Great. We got her. Cool. Woohoo. All right. Thank you, Alex, for coming on. You're just such a yeah, light. Thank you. Same to you guys. I love all the stuff that you guys uh, are always dabbling in and coming up with. And it's always fun for me to kind of just see the new stuff that you guys come out with, too. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, it's important to take care of your mind. How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? That's how our brains work. You only get one. They haven't perfected the technology where you can put it in a jar yet. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language or taking a nice power nap. That's my favorite. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. I personally have used therapy, Bible counselors, talking to a trusted pastor or advisor at church to get through hard times in my life. And I highly recommend opening up to someone else when you're going through difficult times. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you hate Zoom meetings as much as I do. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash B. That's BetterHelp.com slash B. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for bearing with me because I don't and know who the of, Kardashians are. And... Speaking of pop culture, though, you did want to talk about the Lizzo story. Yeah, oh. so Lizzo. Yeah. So, yeah, she went on stage and uh, talked about how oppressed she was. Mm -hmm. We need to vote and change the nation's laws, laws that are oppressing us. And she's clearly, like, had enough to eat. And Yeah, she's well-fed. She's, she's rich. She's, she's successful. successful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that that's just always funny to me, so... I don't know. I don't know if I had much to talk about mm -hmm. beyond. Those are always my favorite stories. Yeah. I, yeah. And I don't really even know who Lizzo is. I think. Well, I think one of the things that I always find weird about the whole like Lizzo, I don't know if you call it like a controversy or a phenomenon, is it's not my type of music, but I get that it's like good music. Like okay. if, if it was just that she was popular as a singer, I don't think people would be going after her so often. But it's when she reveals like yeah. wears revealing outfits and then it's that whole body positive thing where it's like you have to say this is sexy and you have to right. say this is attractive or right. it's healthy. Like it's not. If it was just, hey, this is a talented singer and that's what she was famous for, I don't think there'd be a lot of blowback right. against it. But it's like this thing where it's like, no, you have to say this person is healthy and beautiful and attractive. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> say it, Adam. Say it. I, I always find, too, that the, like the overweight singers who really lean into the like body positive, they always end up losing weight because mm -hmm. it's like they get yes. famous and then they just like lose all this yes. weight and then everybody and then gets mad at And them. then it's confusing because that side is like, well, you're supposed to say that she looks better now, but also you can't yeah, you say that she didn't look good before. Yeah. And people will get mad at them for that. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a banger of the week. Banger of the week. Thousands did after Ben Shapiro casually strolls through a Whole Foods. And there's dead people in Ben Shapiro, who's very short. And that was after that podcast tweeted out, uh, the, the podcast convention tweeted out an apology. Yeah. Because Ben Shapiro had like there. walked in the background <laughs> past some people's Tormented stands. everyone. And they the apologized show. for the harm done. Yeah. That was part of the like, we apologize for the harm done to the community. And didn't they say they did, he wasn't even like a book guest. They gave Daily Wire a booth because it's one of the most popular podcasts in the country. Yeah, right. And he was just there, and that was traumatizing. He like showed up and said to hi people. to the Daily Wire crew, it's and like so absurd. I don't think he was even doing the rounds and yeah. saying hi to other people. He just like happened to walk by this guy's booth while he was guy girl whatever while he was going to the Daily Wire booth, and they yeah. 
it is one of those things that like the ratio on Twitter, it gives me hope because yeah. like yeah, even people who blasting. don't necessarily like Ben Shapiro are like, it's such this a ridiculous, ridiculous yeah. overreaction. Did you see his response to it? He did a video response and he's just showing him like handshaking people and they're like, we love you and this and that. And he's like, this is the damage I did. <laughs> you know? They showed footage from the event. Yeah. 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 That was awesome. Uh, bomb of the week. Bomb of the week. Wife puts, I did that. I did that. Stickers next to socks. Husband keeps leaving on the floor. <laughs> that was a bomb. You would have thought like that could have caught on. And yeah, you'd think relatable so. family humor. Relatable, you know. It's good boomer humor. You must have I'm just really fan. nailed it with the rest of them. Yeah. yeah, I'm a fan. And now it's time for the strongest segment of any week: oh, wow. Sizzler facts. Fifteen weeks ago, we debuted a new feature on the podcast called Sizzler Facts. Sizzler's first celebrity endorse. Oh. We're going right into it. Sizzler's first celebrity endorsement was Kareem Abdul. Is that supposed to be Jabbar, not Jafar? Jafar. Jabbar. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. To convince Sometimes errors creep into our Sizzler facts. So. Yeah. No, that's his. Uh, that's his brother, I think. Kareem Abdul Jafar. I'm going to say it's the, Jabbar, the guy from Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> the villain from Aladdin endorsed Sizzlers. To convince him to film a commercial for the popular restaurant, then CEO of Sizzler, Kerry Cramp, had to face off with him on the blacktop. Kerry Cramp lost 148 to 3. This has been Sizzler Facts. But if he lost, then he did. So he didn't have to beat him to get. I guess he just, he had, just had, he had to just play. Just he just had to play him, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, now it's time for an even better segment than Sizzler Facts Weekly News with Adam Yenster. It's time for the Weekly News with Adam Yetzer. Former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, who won a Nobel Prize for his role in ending the Cold War, died this week at the age of 91. And oh my gosh, it looks like he was bludgeoned to death. What's that? Oh, that was there already. A man set a new record by paddling 38 miles down the Missouri River in a raft made from a hollowed out pumpkin. And unlike Huckleberry Finn, he did it without using the N-word. After suffering a rebound case of COVID, Jill Biden tested negative and returned to work on Tuesday, which means next week it's Joe's turn to get it again. While accepting an award on stage at the VMA Awards, Lizzo claimed that she's oppressed. The crew is hoping to have the stage rebuilt and repaired by next year. <laughs> The University of Texas is offering an entire class on the music of Taylor Swift. Students taking the course say they hope Biden will forgive their debt again when they're unable to get a job. Twilight star Taylor Lautner got engaged to a woman who is also named Taylor, which will make them both Taylor Lautner. Fans were surprised to hear he's marrying a woman. A produce truck crashed on a California freeway, covering the road in thousands of smashed tomatoes. Looks like the stage after Pete Davidson performs. Harry Styles stopped his concert at Madison Square Garden because someone was throwing chicken nuggets at him. In other words, it worked. No one was more upset than Harry's One Direction bandmate Liam Payne, who had made the nuggets at the food court. The last member of an indigenous tribe in Brazil died alone in the jungle after living uncontacted for decades. Anthropologists believe he died peacefully, having never seen The Last Jedi keeping up with the Kardashians or a TikTok video. A prolonged and record-breaking heat wave is affecting much of the western U.S. this week, which is great news for all the murder victims still in Lake Mead. That's it for Weekly News. To see the full Bee Weekly, subscribe to the new Babylon Bee podcast channel on YouTube, and come see me live this weekend at McCurdy's in Sarasota, Florida, and September 7th and 8th at Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, Florida. Well, that was great, Adam. Now we're going to talk to Brian Lau, who does comic books. Yay, cool. You've been man. on the podcast before, and you came out and you showed us your Space People book. And, uh, uh, yeah, Space People. And the, fire, and the Fireman book. Fire People, Space People. Yes. Yeah, so um, can we do one thing? You weren't here, Adam. It's awesome mm -hmm. to meet you. Um, can I have my, I'm going to have my son come in and join us a couple times here and there. So you didn't get sure. to receive gifts. I did not, and I love receiving gifts. So I'm going to let you choose one of the two. Hey, that's awesome. People got... Um, uh, one of the two books and some posters in it. So I have Staunch Ambition. It's not called Space People, Kyle. It's called Staunch mm -hmm. Ambition. Close. Okay. What if we enter... That's why I haven't had it yet. I've been looking for it all <laughs> over the place, people. Googling like Space I... People. I've asked at stores for it, Space but... People. Yeah. Higgs in space. Or it's, uh, it's what if we entered the supernatural through advanced technology is the general concept. Like what if the kingdom of God came through advanced technology? Heresy uh, jar? Heresy no, jar no, no, no. It's not. It's not. Listen. 
You're the first guest that has said it'll come through technology. Everyone else says it'll come through mushrooms and LSD. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's not a good thing, I don't think, but but no, would it redeem like redeem through technology. Of course, mm. technology's not good or bad, so the devil can use it and does, obviously, and it could be used for evil or it could be used for good, you know, just like Name one it, instance of technology. What's an example being of that? What, yeah. What, what's Medical an example of that of the kingdom of God coming through technology? Uh, well, some of the things that would intrigue me is, for instance, like, oh, well, let me preface it with this. Sure. If when Jesus came, bef- the prophecies of a Messiah coming was completely misunderstood. To become a man is like was like beyond comprehension, and to and to die and suffer is still beyond comprehension to tons of religions. Like that's like crazy to like Muslims or whatnot. So, and Jew- Jews, you know, like uh, just reject that idea that God would do that, like, or be like that. Yeah, if Ben Shapiro Vulnerable. walked through here right now, he would strongly disagree. Oh, yeah, he would kill us all. So, no, I'm kidding. But uh, no, the thing is, is uh, it's just the point is we don't know how God's really going to kingdom, you know, how he works sometimes and it's mysterious. So the idea with what if in like cloning and all this kind of genetic engineering and, and, and it's just a sci-fi idea, but what if, what if the idea of resurrection came through technology that we were able to come up with and figure out all the different possible ways people or people could be genetic code and all that and then what if there and then the supernatural of course all this would have to be connected to god and and redeeming anything physical or technology or whatnot um but what if we advance all this way but then connected with god god brings about his kingdom because god deals with the physical god is not just supernatural God is both phys- you know, deals with the physical, becomes physical, and of course, there's a supernatural. We also accept Venmo for our heresy jar <laughs> if you don't have cash. Yeah. Well, I'm writing doesn't, the future here, not, bring, not sci-fi. Doesn't bringing it about through technology or or human scientific advancement take away the miraculous part of no, God's No, because because though? God used it, God didn't drop a book down from the sky to give us sacred scripture. He used human beings. To give a sacred scripture, God uses he, he so much uses the so physical they that he becomes be, physical himself. So they would at least have been the same way, like you know, Moses was inspired. They would at least have to be yes, scientists. That's what I mean and, by the supernatural. You know, techno- uh, technology developers who are inspired by God. Yes, it would. I mean, God is the author of all beauty, physical, whatever. And the this we're not manic, or I think it, what is the heresy Manichaeanism, where we it's like. Physical bad, spirit good. That's not Christianity. Christianity is the spirit and the, and the flesh redeemed in God. So all the earth will be redeemed, not or resurrected, and, and the new Jerusalem and all this stuff you see in in Scripture. So that's the general idea of the sci-fi book. And, and another thing I like to think we we I'll say this. I like this pitch. I, I use it a little sometimes for the book. Being yeah, we're talking about it, I, and I'm not sure which book you're interested, the firefighter book or what, but you can choose one of the two. Um, it's twenty bucks. Yeah. So, all right. So, anyways, uh, I like your strategy of giving people gifts that you bring to, and say you can pick which one of these I'm going to give to you as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you get the pick. Yeah. Well, it makes you feel uh, you got something you you like. You as could say I give these out you. to everyone. I have thousands of them, and then just put it back in a box and leave. <laughs> Wait a guest. <laughs> yeah, I just want to look good on the show. No, uh, but the idea is back in when the microscopes. Remember when microscopes were invented? No, I'm kidding. I but, think uh, that was before by time. Yeah, yeah. But, but there was the theory that the more we studied the microscopic, it would get simpler, right? I mean, you've heard that. Right? So like, but that is far from the truth. So we, have, we always think, we actually think so scientific today that we forget the supernatural that you're emphasizing, I think, is that it's got to be all through God and his ultimate power and grace. But think about that. The, we actually have learned so much and we think we're so smart with our scientific age and, and enlightenment and uh, you know empirical evidence but it's still such a mystery to how far we can go microscopically i mean we don't we don't know the end is it infinite or does that connect to the infinite of god and the same with the cosmos i mean is there an end to the cosmos or is there does it go on forever and if it's either one of those how does it work if there is an end what's beyond the end so like as much as we know in science, which we've come a long way, obviously know a lot of great stuff, but there's still that supernatural, you know, mystery and paradox and stuff that uh, we believe as Christians. So that's some of the stuff that intrigues me with this sci-fi supernatural book. We also take Bitcoin. <laughs> this is all heresy to you? Yes. It's all heresy. 
Uh, so you have Blood of the Baptist. Well, just wait until you read soon. that. This is going to be John Which, the Baptist. Whoa. Speaking of heresy, we have John the Baptist holding his own head. Yeah, it's, uh, that's in Revelation, I think. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so is well, how is that? Is he a zombie? There's a lot of classic art of John the Baptist, obviously his head on a platter. And but yeah, there's statues stuff. on Gothic cathedrals of him like holding, oh, holding his, his own, own head, head. Mm-hmm. yeah okay see this is what i don't know mm-hmm. and i don't like, frequent gothic cathedrals yeah so uh that that image of john holding his head I, obviously is very powerful and i think it it shows the drama of what john's life is ultimately john is one of the most i'll say this this i feel called i felt called to do all these books but i feel called to do this uh, book on john the baptist because it's so intriguing he is so crucial to our Salve, salvific history to Jesus's ministry starting you know he was there to launch Jesus's ministry as far as the followers and stuff and you know pr- prepare the way um but John's we don't know a lot through scripture but we know enough and John's life is is, is like dramatic as any Shakespearean novel and is it's is it's as epic as any kind of Greek mythology but yet it's real history so and this this concept, one of the main concepts that intrigues me with John is you got John is pro- prolific in preaching repentance and the kingdom of God and preparing a way for Jesus. There's like 430 some years, I, I wrote it in my notes, but what is it, like 400 and some years where there was no prophet speaking oh, yeah. since Malachi. 430, yeah, I was like, I wanted to make sure I uh, pitched this good here. But, but so j- there's this long silence, and j- John comes, not only the last prophet of the Old Testament, the bridge between the old and the new, but he actually gets to see the Messiah face to face, as opposed to all the other prophets who just would talk about him. So John is this, what's the scripture there? Truly I tell you, uh, where's where do I have the whole scripture? The oh yeah, yeah that's right. Screen, there. Yeah. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Like, so that points to the fact of how significant John is. And then, of course, Jesus being the ultimate significance. You get the next scripture. But my point with John is, it's interesting because he 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 has this ministry and significance, but then he gets in prison, and Jesus is out doing his ministry, healing people, and doing all these miracles, but John just stays rotted in jail and starts to doubt, sends some of his disciples out to ask Jesus, um, are you who we say you, or, you know, he's kind of wondering, is this the Messiah now, it seems, because he's in prison. And that contrast, something I love what you guys do, we share, is this, um, what is it, the prosperity gospel. That's evil. That's, you know, a lot of people are not Christians because they look at certain Christians like Olstein and that kind of mentality. And they Joel think, Osteen. Yeah, the Irish preacher. The Irish preacher, yeah. They think that that's what Christianity is, or some people think that, and it's, it does a disservice to what real Christianity is. So this contrast between John rotting away in prison and ultimately dying while Jesus is out and it looks good for Jesus, like he's got the ministry going, maybe there's going to be a revolt he'll lead, but he's healing people, but then John just dies. But then Jesus... You see why Jesus didn't intervene with John, his cousin, because that wasn't the point. All kinds of people weren't healed. He didn't heal everyone, but he did that to show that he is who he is, the Son of God, the Messiah. So that intrigues me, John's plight, because we're in John's plight. We're supposed to follow Jesus to the point where we carry our cross, to where we suffer. He didn't die for us so that we would live happy and not suffer. He died for us to show us how to and that we would be redeemed and resurrected beyond it. Give us hope. So this new book, I'm working with Kristen Oren on it. Um, again, she helped me on a staunch ambition, and she uh, works with you guys. I've met her through this. Uh, Jimmy Aiken, I don't, you guys probably don't know who Jimmy Aiken is. He's famous for uh, debating uh, James White uh, several Sad. times. He, he's an international uh, known uh, like writer and uh, Catholic apologist, and he's brilliant. He's a smart guy. You might disagree with him, obviously, doesn't it? Emily uh, Zelasco. I got original art over here we can show, and um, Bill Embel. So where is this, when is this book coming out? It's probably, I'm, I'm working on it now. I've got just the beginning parts of it. Um, one thing I'll sh- I would like to show some art on it from these yeah, amazing artists. Yeah, I'd love to see that, yeah. Yeah, should we do that now? Yeah, or? let's see it. Let's, see, right. let's see the Let art. Me, cool. I got to grab the art. So. I'll describe it for the audio listener. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's terrible. It's a stick figure. It has... Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Brian, All right. Brian Lau, his pronouns are he, him. He's wearing a black shirt. 
So the first thing that came to me with writing it, other than all the intrigue, all the intrigue that I had with this story was that uh, John, as a young man, has this vision. And him and Elijah are at the water, and Elijah in the Old Testament hit the water and parted at Jordan. I think it was the Jordan. And so John has this vision, and Elijah parts the water for him. And John walks out into the water and turns around, and on the shore he sees all this sin, you know, like people worshiping, you know, exotic pagans or, you know. What is this from? This is this is an idea to sh in the book. It's it's like the Passion of the Christ. Oh, this so isn't in the Bible. Yes, of course. It, it's, it's, I couldn't yes. remember this. Yeah, no, this is not right out of the Bible. This is just an idea that John is having a vision. I thought this was like uh, Catholics, like one of the books you guys added. In. No, this <laughs> is a way to do like what the Chosen does very well. Is to try to, I, try, I want to take... not to do in Revelation. Yeah, great. <laughs> I, wa I want to take everything we know about John and then try to just kind of emphasize that through like fill in the blanks like the chosen does mm -hmm. okay. i don't know if the curse and revelation applies to comics like i think you're okay <laughs> you, can do, you can do hypothetical yeah. graphic novels fan fiction <laughs> this is a this is a historical fiction yeah so it's like it's like uh the three the, the fourth wise men or you know like passion of the christ these kinds of things where you you deal with what you know but you try to you try to bring drama to the mm -hmm. stuff that's important a little drummer boy I suppose, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, the vision is he looks on the shore and he sees all this sin, you know, and there's supposed to be truth in it, like a parable. Parables aren't factual, but you can get a truth out of it. So, the truth is, he looks on the shore and he sees all this sin. You know, people chained the treasure chest and treasure overflowing, you know, all, all these different kinds of sins on the shore. And all the blood from all the, like, people being fed to lions, you know, the early uh, martyrs and... All this stuff he sees, and the, the water's parted, but all the blood starts coming down in between the water parted. And the dead people or the diseased people start coming down to be baptized by John. And he's young, so, you know, this. I, the idea is maybe God gave him a vision of what his lead, because he, he, I believe, he knew he was going to be a, like a prophet or an Elijah type and kind of modeled his life like that. But then all these dead people come up, and he baptizes them, and they come up from baptism looking whole and healthy. And they go dead off. people? Yeah, they're like dying or de decrepit. They're or not dead. They're not, not, whatever sins they have, but dead. they look bad. Gotcha. And they come down and they he baptizes them and they come up and they're healthy. And they go off. And then there's this one glowing that's standing there. It would be Jesus. And he comes out holding a lamb. And they're holding sacrificial stuff from the Old Testament where you would sacrifice stuff for your sins. And Jesus is holding a lamb. And he's glowing. And of course, John sees, oh, this is the Messiah. And Jesus comes down looking beautiful, healthy, glowing, and John baptizes him. But Jesus comes up dead, and the water's cleared, and all the people and all the sin is uh, uh, healed. Okay, so it's just, it's like a symbolic supposed vision John could have had. And some of the art done by Jeff Von uh, Buskirk, he did this cover for me. I don't know where the cameras are there. But he did this cover. I guess you guys take it. Uh -huh. yeah, this can, cover. Yeah. He does, this is a John like this. John von Buskirk is like a real fine artist. Like he's done murals on the side of giant buildings and stuff. And like I went to his studio to pick up this original art. And he has this massive studio. He does real. I just do digital art lately. But he has uh -huh. this massive studio, and he's just magnificent. So I wanted to get some like real fine artists doing it. So he's working on this vision. So here, here we have a page. Oh, look at this. And is here, it, so is this never before seen exclusive oh, reveal? Yes, I forgot. It's in my notes. One. Never yeah. before that seen. Be Even right. the artists yeah. themselves have not seen. Oh, wonderful! They did this blind. They did it blind. Yeah, yeah that's blindfold. great. So John or uh, uh, Jeff is working on some of the pages for this like eight page vision. Oh, the other thing about the book is I want to have. That's cool. In I like the, the style. That's nice. Yeah. Thanks. In the book, oh, yeah. I see here's you, Jesus with the lamb getting baptized. Yeah, that's there's going to be about eight pages for this vision uh -huh. as I explained it. But then, very cool. The idea is you're reading the graphic novel, and it takes you. You're reading the book, and then this will be an insert that unfolds. And the story will say along the lines of, and then I had a vision from beyond. And then you pull this out of the book, and it's a different art style, and it comes separate from the book, so it's coming from beyond. And you look at this massive very meta, vision. Very meta, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to do something like that. So Pop-up book. Let's look at this. Is when Jesus comes out from being baptized, this is, I love right, this piece. This. this is when he comes up. From being baptized, and he looks yeah. almost crucified, and he's holding the lamb, which is healthy now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the people are healed from Jesus' sacrifice. Yeah, great. So, awesome. anyways, so Jeff is um, honored to be working with him. I also worked with. Now uh, we know why Dan took the week off. He doesn't want all these Second Commandment violations. <laughs>
<laughs> this is Emily Zelasko, and that's supposed to be oh, like a beautiful. traditional iconic. I did a color version of it. Let's show the color version in the exclusive. Yeah, we can show the color. Okay. Yeah, because sure. I was I was going to try to say, well, maybe some exclusive awesome. art yeah. we'll see. In I like that. That's really but cool. But this is like an old traditional. The idea with the wings, um, you see angels with wings. The word angel means messenger. So that's just the wings always signified in, in art, art as being a messenger. So sometimes you'll see John shown with wings because he was obviously the proclaimer of Jesus coming. And so having these wings back there kind of symbolizes that. And we got, I got two more. Yeah, let's so check them out. So Bill Emble oh, great. Yeah, wow. did these uh, two. Beautiful, the, the beautiful. Very graphic version should of John take, holding his own Hold them up like in front of your the, face. Uh, yeah. Should we take the post-it note off of that one? Oh, yeah. I, I, well, they can, I thought he was like, a, like a big reveal. Or yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh, he has John's no head. head. <laughs> uh, and to market the book, I'm going to have John the Baptist's uh, uh, water guns. So you can go around baptizing people with a water gun. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> you know, like space balls yeah. with a flamethrower. I'm going to do the water yeah. gun. So anyways, awesome. John, uh, cool. uh, Bill Emble, man, is nice. just amazing. I, you can tell I like that fine art looking stuff. Yeah, so. that's really great. That's awesome. Okay, so you've got the, the Fireman book. Was Inferno City Firehouse? In Inferno City Firehouse. True stories from real Detroit firefighters. Staunch Ambition, a.k.a. Space People. Yeah, I'm going to check out Staunch Ambition, I think. And, you want uh, that yeah. one? Oh, okay. Cool. So I'll check it yeah, out. He doesn't 20, like 20 the bucks. Fireman one. 20 bucks. Yeah. I'm no, just... I'm curious because it seems like the Staunch Ambition uh, content is more of what we talked about, so I'm curious yeah. about it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that, so check it out, guys. And we'll have links to his website and all the other stuff in the show notes. So go. Yeah, you can message me out. through awesome. there, and I can send you something like a preview. If and you're we'll chat a, yeah, and we'll chat a little more in the subscriber portion. All right. Cool. Dwell is a Bible app we've fallen in love with. Their mission is inspired by the psalmist, who encourages us in Psalm 119 to hide the Word of God in our hearts. Dwell has built the most beautiful listening and reading experience for the Scriptures. Everyone says so. They have over a dozen new recordings of the Bible. They've handpicked voices that will engage and inspire you. And they have the best versions of the Bible, too. In addition to a world-class listening experience and an exclusive read-along mode, Dwell is now the best way to read the Bible on your phone. In fact, studies have shown that recall is significantly increased when listening and reading are combined. In short, a multi-sensory approach leads to quicker and deeper learning. Go to dwellapp.io slash Babylon B to get 10% off a yearly subscription or 30% off Dwell for Life. Dwell for Life! I really miss Adam Ford. So we had an FBI sketch where it involved cross-dressing, yeah. some of our actors. Our second sketch in the last week yeah. that involved cross-dressing. And uh, here's a response. <clears throat> I realize this is parody, but there is so much division in the country already, and so many upset over this that implying the FBI stole women's clothing during the raid doesn't really help. There is no evidence or suggestion from anyone that I have heard of to suggest any clothing was stolen. It makes absolute sense that during a search of a residence, you would want to search all rooms and closets. No, that doesn't mean take things not authorized, but there aren't any allegations so far of clothing being stolen. So this video sort of takes things too far, really. Yeah, make a joke of the documents and such, but don't try to make out the agents to be cross-dressers or sexually perverted, demonizing them and such. Let's try to have some decency still. <laughs> Spoken like a true FBI agent. <laughs> I felt like they were mostly, if, I, I thought it was, they mentioned the cross-dressing yeah. at the end, which I understood some of our viewers yeah, would probably right. have a problem with. But um, I, it's odd that he's more angry that we suggested in the hyperbole of comedy that yeah. maybe they stole clothing from <laughs> like That's the, the joke. That's, we're like, just no, making a joke How about dare it. you say they took clothing? <laughs> I uh, here's one from Jeremy Robbins. I understand the BB is satire, but please know this is filth in the eyes of your God. Five, there's a five verse, there. Verse five of some book. Oh, okay. Leviticus, probably. <laughs> oh, oh he, I see. This is a verse that he's posting. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, we actually discussed this beforehand, because mm -hmm. I, I do understand that concern. It's something that I think about, too. I've always thought it's... It's something that it's okay to do if you're pointing out the absurdity and the sort of comedy of it. Well, he didn't quote verse six. Something. It's okay in the comedy stage. Yeah, but I understand that some people would disagree with that, uh, you know, evaluation. But I've always thought, and there's the argument of ceremonial as as law not, being set aside. Yeah, versus moral law. And you can wear women's yeah. clothes if you want. The law's been abolished. Kyle's even more progressive. He says on this your one than God. <laughs> he's he like, says Just your go God. It. Like it's not his God. Yeah, he's it's like, our God. Yeah. He's like. Just someone who doesn't believe what we believe calling yeah, us out. Oh, yeah, maybe believe. he's not even a Christian. He's just like, this is an abomination, according to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
All right, do you want to read this one for us, uh, Brian? Yeah, Navit uh, Kumar. I never realized how much Kyle looks like a taller Peter Dinklin or Dinklage. <laughs> I, get, I get that a lot. I get yeah. that we did a whole lot. video where you we were did Peter a video Dinklage. where I was Peter Dinklage. I don't know who that is. So. And, uh, hey, thanks for watching, everybody, and stay tuned. If you're a subscriber, we have bonus hate mail, heroes of the Pif- of the faith, and sub headlines. We'll t- chat a little more with Brian Lau, and we will. Um, Ask him the second set of 10 questions. Coming up next for Babylon B subscribers. I think I like the randoms more than the top voted ones. They're, they're fun because you, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's like a box of chocolate. <laughs> Miles M. After dismissing warnings from his mother, Tucker Carlson's face is now stuck <laughs> that way. I like that one a lot. This has been another edition of the B Weekly from the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon B. Reminding you that someone out there knows something about Carmen. And we're going to find them. <laughs>